Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. It seems like today there's been a flurry of news, but uh, you know, we really still haven't seen price move. Bitcoin right now trading at 25 7 per coin. You guys can see very, very low volume, not a lot of price movement. Bitcoin slipping down a little bit too. Um, you know, yesterday it was trading slightly above that, but uh, you know, really not too much to write home about. Uh, volume is low, not too much interest in the crypto space. We're basing back into this level as I feel like I've been reiterating day after day after day. Uh, XRP doing a bit of the same. Uh, psychologically, we're now under that 50 cent mark, 49.7. Uh, which is, I mean, it's psychological. Really, the numbers don't mean much. The bigger thing we have to pay attention to are levels of support, resistance, and, uh, you know, that's kind of the biggie. We are still hovering above this former level of support here. If I were to take it from here, cut off the wicks, uh, that would be a price of 46.2. So we're still staying above that level, uh, making higher lows so far. And I mean, guys, the entire crypto market is roughly in the same spot here. This is total two on the daily. Let me remove some of this. Total two, we're basing back into this level that we saw back in mid-June. And so, I mean, because the market is the way it is, I've been noticing a lot of you guys have been signing up for the Patreon. I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, some of you guys. This isn't even the entire list, but some of you guys over the last two days or so, two or three days that have signed up, wanted to thank Tony, Aaron, Richard, Great Alf, Ruby Shoes, Steve, Neil, Todd, Galen, Vitor, uh, Damien, Steve, Frosty, uh, Todd, Sam, Chuck, Everett, Joe, Darwin, Jeremy, Dusty, Louie, and Mason most recently. So thank you guys so much for signing up. Now is the time time guys i mean five dollars a month and we're still on the lookout for some banger coins uh to just kind of knock it out of the park i'm looking for 100x moves guys i'm not gonna lie to you this is about making money and the altcoin market uh you know showing us that it is weak right now so an accumulation phase has continued to be we haven't seen prices really move the market is still in fear as you guys can see here at 35 so that's a, a good indicator too that we uh, i mean should be accumulating at this point so I'm going to keep a lookout for some more coins, guys. And thanks so much to my new patrons. I'm sorry I should be, uh, you know, naming everybody, but, uh, you know, it's it's been getting overwhelming. I know a lot of you guys want to see my trades, and so this is one I'm dedicating the Patreon to. We're going to make a lot of money this bull run, but, you know, patience is a virtue. There is still going to be some waiting, but, uh, you know, in the meantime, we got to be prepared. Some positive news, guys. We're seeing Binance extending support for XRP. This coming from Wheezy at Nerd Nation Unbox. Despite all the negativity uh, surrounding Binance recently, they did extend XRP spot trading support by adding a new stablecoin, the FD USD pair, to their platform. Notably, the XRP to FD USD pair will be open for trading on September the 7th. So if you guys are watching this video today, it's going to be released today. The first digital USD is a newly introduced dollar peg stablecoin. The stablecoin has launched uh, or was launched in June by a subsidiary firm of First Digital from Hong Kong. The stablecoin is backed by cash and other cash equivalents. So Binance uh, certainly not giving up despite their uh, legal and regulatory woes globally really trying to stay relevant. And I mean, for, for good reason. With regulatory clarity coming down the pike, it might be down the road that uh, we might have to find ways to begin to use Binance, uh, no matter what country we're in, if you know what I mean. Who knows how the economy will look in a year or two. Uh, just gonna leave it at that. Michael Branch here posting this. Ripple, the payments company behind the crypto token XRP has joined hands with Jared Isaacman, Elon Musk's partner at SpaceX. So a brand new development, guys, kind of blindsided us from Ripple. They've joined hands with Isaac, uh, with Isaacman, Jared Isaacman, who is Elon Musk's partner at SpaceX, the billionaire founder of the payments processing company Shift4, flew to Earth orbit on SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule in 2021. In the latest development, though, Ripple had officially announced it was working on a donations project in collaboration with Isaacman. Uh, here's what they said. Ripple will join Shift4 CEO Jared Isaacman and the next 50K USD in any crypto donation made to the Maui Relief Fund will be matched 200 so the partnership involves donation matching, which means one party matches the contribution of another party, obviously. Uh, so guys, I don't know what's going to come of this. This is kind of a big leap. And, uh, you know, the fact that Ripple is partnering up with a uh, an Elon Musk related partner who does own a uh, processing payment processing company does sound very promising. Ripple also did uh, post this just yesterday. XRP can now be donated to charities on the giving block. So this is related to that. You can use XRP to donate. Ripple will be joining Shift4 CEO. This is Jared Isaacman in the next 50K USD in any crypto donation made to the Maui Relief Fund will be matched 200%. And so guys, I will link this in the description if this is something you are interested in. Interesting news that uh, some people were mentioning that, uh, you know, why 
didn't uh, shift X and uh, Jared Isaac mean go with Dogecoin? Well, I'm sure there are probably reasons for that. Uh, you know, Doge, although one of Elon's faves maybe isn't cut out for the task. This is why they are partnering with Ripple and going to be leveraging looks like the XRP ledger for this project. Anyway, some great news here. Interesting news uh, developing. We've also got this guy's from the Wrath of Kahneman. This came out late last year, but it's interesting because this is what he noticed in the course of describing African regulation. This African blockchain report from November of last year mentions Ripple. And guys, I've got the uh, report up here if you guys want to peruse at your leisure. But he notices this, it mentions Ripple, but also has some commercial bank partners, plural. So they mentioned that there are banking partners, not just one partner, but multiple. So more than just the NBE. And so now we're asking ourselves, who, who are these partners? This uh, obviously slipped through the cracks. Nobody noticed this until now. Uh, so he asks who regional branches of the existing partners like QNB Egypt, Things that make you go, hmm, the government itself is doing their own research and reflecting on their own solution or ideas regarding application of blockchain or even emerging technologies. But in another way, they provide this flexibility for commercial banks to adopt some blockchain solutions. For example, and they note down here, Ripple has some partners within the commercial banks, plural in Egypt. So it's not a ban in terms of blockchain technology. There has been uh, some confirmed partnerships with regards to central banks uh, in Africa and Egypt. I do believe the uh, Central Bank of Egypt too is one of those confirmed Ripple partners. So commercial banks in Egypt, I mean, at the central bank level, if we have been seeing uh, adoption through them, it would only make sense that, uh, you know, some of the other bigger banks would feel confident enough to fall in line. So maybe it's going to be part of a plan for larger expansion. Who knows? But wanted to thank Wrath of Kahneman just for that keen observation there. Crypto Cowboy, or Cowboy Crypto rather, also posted this. Ripple is partnered with the U.S. Faster Payments Council, whose founder, Ken Kruska, is also the head of product at, guess where, guys? Amazon Web Services. Now, we know in the past, uh, Amazon has highlighted Ripple for their X Current and X Rapid products this is before they uh, switched the branding over to ODL, On Demand Liquidity. So on this Amazon page, it uh, talks a little bit about Amazon Web Services and uh, the product Ripple. They highlight Ripple on an entire page. I wish I had the page up here, uh, but I have highlighted it in former videos. But this is an interesting connection. So he's also the head of products at Amazon Web Services. Now, Ripple's UBRI, so their university funding project, is partnered with ANU, whose board member is also at Amazon. Probably nothing, he says. So Cowboy Crypto retweeting out his original tweet here. And take a look at this, guys. Brian Fletcher, head of data and security policy, Amazon Web Services. Also uh, here, Australian National University. Brian Fletcher, part of the ANU Ninian Sefin Cyber Law Program since 2020. Cowboy Crypto mentions it here. Ripple's University Blockchain and Research Initiative is invested currently in Australian National University or ANU. And so Brian Fletcher is a board member at ANU and is also the head of data and security policy at Amazon Web Services. So the connections keep mounting. I love when we find this kind of stuff because then when we see, uh, you know, partnerships down the road that we had anticipated, it's never a huge surprise, but it does definitely feel satisfying to see that our work and research does eventually point in the right direction. Anyway, wanted to thank Cowboy Crypto there for pointing that out. Looking globally now, guys, to the G20 Summit this weekend, this one courtesy of 801 underscore XRP on Twitter, the leader's letter from the FSB to G20 leaders. Okay, let me just read this passage to you. A resilient and stable financial system is indispensable to sustaining economic growth. This is coming from G7 directly, particularly in the current environment. Under the leadership of the Indian G20 presidency, the FSB has advanced work to promote global financial stability in two key ways. First, by addressing existing vulnerabilities in the financial system. Okay, so pay close attention to that. Second, through analytical and policy work to further enhance the resilience of the financial system to structural changes. The synthesis paper on policy for crypto assets that we and the IMF have delivered to this summit is an important example of the latter. So guys, financial stability obviously uh, still promoting this, and they're realizing this now more than ever. Well, I mean, create the problem and here, here you plebs, here is the solution. Usher in central bank digital currencies, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And they're expecting us to be all happy and, oh, thank you so much, Mr. Government. Anyway, it's kind of disgusting, but uh, you know, the double-edged sword, the uh, silver lining, I guess you could say, RippleNet XRP going to be central to this. Uh, 801 Crypto with another one here. 
Uh, this coming from the Bank of America specifically. Okay, so the pace for payments technology development across the APEC region is breathtaking. They're talking about the Asian Pacific region specifically. And yesterday we recently got news from the Asia Pacific region. Uh, I did a video where I briefly touched on it yesterday, which I will link up here in the top right hand corner, guys. I'm going to dive into it a little more today. With regards to Bank of America first, though, uh, they say Treasury must understand the scale and significance of these changes to fully harness the benefits. TMI maps out this rapidly evolving landscape. Technology is having an effect on real-time activity in the APEC, uh, albeit to a lesser degree than APIs is blockchain. It's used as an underlying security measure in certain transactions, but it's not having the level of success that its preceding hype had. That's interesting. But notice what they mentioned down here. Not having the level of success that its preceding hype had suggested. Uh, this was noted by Venkat. It has played an important role in helping to digitize trade documentation as the technical basis of the smart contract. But in cross-border payments, the work of Ripple is a possible exception. So Bank of America, as we know, already a Ripple partner. They are saying, you know, blockchain, the hype was all there. But, you know, we're, we're still not really seeing, uh, you know, the impact that we were expecting. But... Ripple is an exception. Its impact has been limited, he comments. The reason for this is the rapid emergence of Swift GPI is the favorite solution for tracking and tracing cross-border payments. Now, I mean, that might be the initial thought. Of course, we got to remember Swift still has the lion's share of the market. But guys, technology will take over and that will change. So interesting, they do mention Ripple as an exception of, uh, you know, the blockchain technology that is really going to change this face of finance, the new face of finance. And slowly, slowly but surely, Ripple is still chipping away at Swift's lunch, which I always love to see. So wanted to thank 801 Crypto just for posting that. Now, Tim, Tim R614 on Twitter posted this. Ripple president Monica Long makes a big statement at the Paris Blockchain Week, guys, this week. Here's what she said ahead of a major blockchain conference. The Paris Blockchain Week decided to remind the crypto community of an important statement made by Ripple's president Monica Long. Long's statement was a bold prediction that even the largest banks need to adopt the technology of decentralized finance as a necessity for their future survival. She is making an urgent statement here, guys. Here it is. Here's a quote. Uh, and it's in quotes here from Paris Blockchain Week, tweeted out, the past couple of years have been a real tipping point for institutional DeFi, where even the biggest of banks are embracing this technology as the future, and they have to adapt or die. Remember when Monica Long said that? So that one, a quote from Monica Long, president of Ripple. Adapt or die, big words. Uh, it is interesting how these words by Long not only remain relevant, but are being confirmed even right now. When SBI Remit, one of the branches of the powerful Japanese financial conglomerates, SBI Holdings, just today announced the expansion of activities in Asia and entry into the payments market in the Philippines, Vietnam, and Indonesia. So that's what I was talking about yesterday, just touched on it briefly. In particular, it is entering these markets through the creation of a joint venture with Ripple, SBI, Ripple Asia. So guys, bringing us back to that news, wanted to thank Cypress Domenicor here for noticing something else. I'm going to be getting to that in a second, uh, but I wanted to kind of give you guys a little bit more context here. Ian Bins posting this. So XRP remittance technology has been expanded to three more countries. So three more corridors, guys. This was pretty big news yesterday. Ripple Labs payment platform is expanding into Southeast Asia. So the APAC region, uh, as the crypto firm partners with a prominent Japanese financial services titan, uh, according to a new press release, Ripple Labs is collaborating with SBI Remit uh, to obviously open up remittance corridors to the Philippines, Vietnam, and Indonesia using the digital asset XRP. So they said even they confirmed that they are going to be using XRP in these corridors. The partnership would allow citizens in those nations to receive remittances in their native currencies. As stated by SBI, SBI Remit sends a customer's remittance request and we send XRP in real time in response to that request by partnering with Tranglo. So they're doing it through Tranglo, a leading company in the fund transfer industry as an overseas remittance destination partner. Customers will be able to receive remittances in local legal currencies. According to SBI, which oversees $138 billion in assets, the Philippines, Vietnam, and Indonesia uh, corridors, I guess, were chosen because the rate at which they receive remittances is high and only accelerating. So they've uh, identified, obviously, these countries, realized there is definitely a need for this. Let's leverage XRP to do this. The quote goes on to say, we will expand the range of international remittances servicing using this XRP bank account in the Philippines, Vietnam, and Indonesia. In these countries, the share of remittances to bank accounts is high, and we expect that the introduction will accelerate in the future. So XRP as a bridge currency, guys, 
real world utility now being leveraged at scale. Yoshitaka Katao was the one initially talking about this. Here's a message directly from SBI Holdings uh, website here, message from top management uh, discussing crypto, blockchain technology, DLT, all that fun stuff. The SBI group has also concentrated on both domestic and overseas investments in the next generation of growing industries while investing aggressively in developing countries in Asia. So that's part of their strategy. Uh, down here, advancement of innovation technologies has progressed all over the world. And the area of fintech in the financial industry, as well as the fields of AI, blockchain, DLT, and Internet of Things, which are now introduced in various industries, hold the potential of creating a trend that the group has never seen before. So this is blowing people's minds to the point where they're saying, we've never seen this before. Okay, this is growing at an unprecedented rate that we have never seen before. Now, part of what I've noticed while doing this channel for so long is that sometimes we get really lucky. And we notice when the messaging is identical from different agencies, which means at least to me speculation, but it means to me that these groups have coordinated the messaging so that they can say the same things at the same time to keep the messaging consistent. I mean, I can think of tons of examples. Uh, one of them in particular was uh, the level playing field. We've heard that messaging before from obviously Ripple, but also from other organizations in crypto and fintech. Uh, when it comes to cryptocurrency adoption, right? They want to stay on message because they want to drill that message in our head. Now, here we have SBI Holdings, Yoshitaka Katao, and so the potential of creating a trend that the group has never seen before. Part of the messaging here, and so again, got to give credit to Cypress Domenicor here for noticing this. I also wanted to bring this up. Guys, this has only gotten 107 views from June 28th, 2023 from FinTech Global, okay? This was a regulatory summit, Global Reg Tech Summit 2023, Digital Assets, and What is Next? Now, after this presentation, David Cunningham, the head of strategy and partnership for digital assets at Citi, he made this comment. I will link this in the description if you guys uh, are interested in the 22 minute presentation. But listen to what he has to say here. There's a great opportunity for people for, with your skill set to help us large organizations. There's, you know, build your own companies as well, of course, but you can really help us. To, to get the infrastructure in place to enable uh, you know, blockchain-based technologies to, um, to really grow at the scale that we haven't seen before. To really grow at the scale that we haven't seen before. To really grow at the scale that we haven't seen before. Growing at scale at an unprecedented rate that we have never seen before. This happening too in the APAC region, a region of the world that is already very Ripple enabled. The ever evolving technology landscape here, guys, as mentioned again in this Bank of America report highlighting Ripple, the possible exception that has made cross-border payments seamless, only competing against Swift, which is, of course, the incumbent. But one day, I think, Ripple will take the lion's share of that market. The SBI partnership, obviously, still the beginning of something that could really ramp up. The Philippines, Vietnam, and Indonesia, three corridors to begin with. But I could definitely see how this is going to start a revolution, something that we have never seen before. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.